Hello, friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Before we take you to your favorite Sports History Network show, just want to tell you a little bit about some merch that you can pick up that represents your favorite SHN podcast. So far, there's t-shirts, coffee mugs, and even books from some of the authors that do podcasts right here on SHN. Who could buy something better than that than have the history right from the, the gentleman that you hear talking about it? But we also are adding things each and every day. And where's that store, may you ask? Well, it's at SportsHistoryNetwork.com. Up at the top, there is the SHN. HN merch button. Click on that. It'll take you right to the store and you can be representing your favorite podcast and show the world that, hey, on the swag that I'm using, it's the headquarters of sports yesteryear, Sports History Network, and my favorite podcaster, the Sports History Network store. Shop there today. Now it's time to take a sports break, a look at sports history on a daily basis. Hello, my friends in sports history. This is Darren Hayes of the Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your place for all things great in sports history. And we have a sports break for you today that's going to have some of the greatest events for August 25th with the players that perform them and their uniform numbers where available. The uniform numbers we're going to talk about today for this Jersey Dispatch Podcast is 29, 16, 7, 2, and 3, 16, 24, 25, and number 27. It all starts off on August 25th, 1921. And was he losing control is the question? Well, New York Yankee pitcher Harry Harper nailed three different batters in one inning, tying a record for Major League batters. Or Major League pitchers, I'm sorry. The batters, well, they weren't so happy about the record. August 25th, 1922, the Chicago Cubs defeated the Philadelphia Phillies 26-23 in the highest scoring Major League game on record. 26-23, that's a lot of scoring. Uh, no wonder somebody wanted to bean three different batters. August 25th, 1924, I'm sorry, that was a different game, different year. August 25th, 1924, Major League Baseball's Washington Senator pitcher Walter Johnson had his second no-hitter in his career as he defeated with his Senator's teammates the St. Louis Browns 2 to nothing in a seven-inning game. August 25th, 1968, New York Yankees outfield player Rocky Calavito, number 29, pitched two-thirds innings and beat the Detroit Tigers 6-5. It was a twin bill that day, and Rocky played right field in the second game and even hit a home run. Not bad for a guy that started the season as an L.A. Dodger wearing number 16 before he was a Yankee wearing number 29. August 25, 1977, Canadian NHL player Tim Horton, who wore number 7 with the Toronto Maple Leafs and had that number retired with that team, and number 2 with the Buffalo Sabres, number retired with that team, was posthumously inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Note, he did also wear number 16, number 24, number 3 jerseys with other teams, including the Pittsburgh Penguins as well during his career. We mentioned that number 2 and number 7 because those were retired with the both the Maple Leafs and the Sabres. August 25th, 1985, New York Mets hurler number 16, Dwight Gooden, became the youngest pitcher to win 20 games in a season. He was 20 years old, 9 months and 9 days old. That's really narrowing it down for the youngest, isn't it? August 25th, 1986, Oakland Athletics' Mark McGuire, wearing number 25, hit his first Major League home run. He had a bunch of them during his career. Great hitter, Mark McGuire. August 25th, 2020, the Chicago White Sox pitcher, Lucas Giolito, number 27 with the Sox, no-hit the Pittsburgh Pirates 4 to nothing at Guaranteed Rate Field in Chicago. And that is your sports break for August 25th. We're glad you joined us for this little bit of sports history. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. If you need some more sports history, go to sportshistorynetwork.com. Go to pigskindispatch.com or our website, jerseydispatch.com. Till tomorrow, everybody, have a great sports history day. Sorry, but my pitching coach just called timeout, and he's coming out to the mound. I think I'm going to get yanked for a reliever. We'll see you back tomorrow for some more great sports history on Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com. Not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel. You get all your daily sports Sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com.
This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Offices of the Pittsburgh Guardian newspaper circa 1924. But for Marla Delft, assistant editor, everything was about to change. For she was about to discover the awesome attractiveness of Row 1 brand retro sports paraphernalia items thanks to Orville Mulligan, sports writer. And there it is. Wow, Orville, that's really the bee's knees. Isn't it just? A poster sized replica of the actual 1909 World Series program cover. I can see that. But where did you get it? And where'd you get it framed? I ordered it from the Row 1 website, where over 6,000 items of sports memorabilia from the 1880s to the 1990s are available for reproduction, in multiple sizes and in several different materials, with over a dozen styles of frame to choose from for prints like this. Well, I'm sure Mr. Delft would love to put up more of these in the office. But I'm equally as sure they're beyond this newspaper's budget. (laughs) <laughs> Not at all, my dear Marla. See for yourself. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Oh my, these are good prices. Oh, and look at this stuff. Oklahoma, Nebraska football. College basketball art. Michael Jordan items. And so Retro it was that Marla Delft discovered the splendiferous magic of row one sports memorabilia arts and prints. You can, too, by visiting sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. That's R-O-W number one today for access to the full row one catalog of gallery prints and gifts like t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, telephone cases, coffee mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Act today for a 15% discount off all prints with coupon code SHN15 and 20% off all other items with coupon code SHN20 at Check out and keep your dial locked to the Sports History Network for the exciting chronicles of the 1920 sports world in Orville Mulligan, sports writer, coming soon. Oh, yes,